Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. As we read the Bible, particularly as we read through the New Testament, we find that it places an incredibly high value on truth, on truth-telling, speaking the truth. The Greek word for truth is aletheia. The prefix a is a negation, it means not. The lathia part of the word comes from lanthanos, which means to cover. And so the word truth, aletheia, literally means uncovered, to not cover. And so as followers of Jesus, we are to be a people who are uncovered. We don't pretend. We don't wear masks, metaphorically speaking. We seek truth, we embrace truth, we speak truth in love. Before 2007, 2008, I didn't know much at all about residential schools. And in recent years, I, like many of you, have come to know more of our own history as it relates to residential schools. And even more recently, Jean and I have been reflecting about our part. We're we're part of the dominant culture. And it is the perspectives and the attitudes of the dominant culture that made possible the residential school experience. It is the attitudes and perspectives of the dominant culture that made possible the practice of assimilation where children were removed from their parents and parents removed from children and indigenous peoples removed from their culture. It is so important that we as the church, as followers of Jesus, that we acknowledge the truth, that we be uncovered and speak the truth about the racism of the past. And it's important that we speak out clearly about the racism in our own communities and in the broader culture as well. I think it was Bishop Desmond Tutu who said, to remain neutral in the face of injustice is to side with the oppressor. And so we need to acknowledge and confess that we've got a lot of work to do in terms of uh, racism and addressing racism, both within our communities and in the broader public as well. There have been times where I, have been more motivated by cultural biases than than by the unconditional love of Jesus. And so we need to acknowledge and repent of those times where we have failed to advocate for marginalized indigenous peoples. Our mission statement here at Sobol says, in part that we want to become like Jesus. And so to become like Jesus means that we, we want to model the reconciling life and work of Jesus as we would seek reconciliation with indigenous peoples. One of the things that just makes this all so much more complicated is the fact that the, um, the atrocities, the horror, the, the abuse that has been heaped on indigenous peoples through the residential school experience made even more complicated because those who perpetrated, many of those who perpetrated the abuse represented the Christian faith. And in so doing, the Christian faith became weaponized. It became an instrument of of power and people in authority abused those under their authority. Recently, we've seen in the news where a discovery of a mass grave was was made 
at the site of a former residential school in Kamloops, BC, a technology ground uh, penetrating radar discovered this mass grave containing the bodies of almost somewhere around 215 uh, children. And that discovery has just stirred up even more angst and, and more sadness heaped upon the already immeasurable pain and angst um, that so many Indigenous families experienced even before that. Tomorrow, Monday, June 21st, 2021, is National Indigenous Peoples Day. This is a special day for recognizing and celebrating the cultures and the contributions of the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis Indigenous peoples of Canada. And one really small way that we want to recognize National Indigenous Peoples Day is with a land acknowledgement. A land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes the unique and enduring relationship between Indigenous peoples and their territories. As we recognize the land, it's an expression of gratitude. It's an expression of appreciation to those whose territory that we reside on. And it's, it's a way of honoring Aboriginal people who were living on the land and working the land long before uh, we came. And so a land acknowledgement is, it's a reflection process where we recognize the long standing history that has brought us here uh, to this moment. And so here is the land acknowledgement statement. I want to acknowledge the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek Nation, people of the three fires known as Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi Nations. And I want to further give thanks to the Chippewas of Saugeen and the Chippewas of Nawash, now known as the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation as being the traditional keepers of this land upon which our church building sits. And I wish to further express our thanks for allowing us to do in and from this location the good work that we believe Jesus has called us to do.